The future belongs to the curious. This is an act of discovery. Come and experience it with us in Arakat and discover your creative potential. This is your path. This is your journey. You decide how it's going to be. Time to free your curiosity that's always in you. Come and experience it with us in Arakad and discover your creative potential. Well, hello. Welcome, everybody, to this webinar. I'm Marco Kiesel, uh, currently the head of industrial design department at Arakad. And well, it is my pleasure to introduce and to welcome our today's guests, Dr. Carmelo Carcino. Dr. Carcino is an industrial designer and a ship designer with a PhD from the University of Genoa on environmental design in the maritime industry. Currently, uh, he's working in the design studio department of Knut Hansen in Athens, where he cooperates on various vessel designs and uh, concepts. Um, his research and professional interests cover several topics concerning environmental design, land and sea transportation, and uh, floating architecture. So today he is here with a talk on sustainability and design. And we are very happy as a department and also as a faculty that Dr. Castino is affiliated to us. Um, yes, welcome again, uh, Carmelo. Uh, happy to see you. Uh, and. It's your goal now. Thank you, Marco. <clears throat> uh, thank you for uh, for your introduction, and it's also a pleasure for me to be to be here. Um, and so, uh, good afternoon to to everyone's uh, everyone's who is um, attending the web seminar. So, <clears throat> uh, I prepared a contribution about sustainability and design. Since I'm uh, particularly interested on this area of research and investigation. Um, and nowadays, sustainability is a relevant argument of discussion within the community of designers. And the pandemic represented a break, a discontinuity from the new routine, the normal life that we were doing, and, and a time for thinking about, about the future. Engineers, architects, and industrial designers are uh, deeply involved uh, in the creation of the, built, of the built environment at various stages and scale. Uh, the city, uh, the square, the park where we go for a walk, uh, public buildings such as museums rather than private homes with furniture, electric devices, and any sort of tools. And furthermore, the private and public transportation, cars and trains, Systems of communication, internet apps, uh, and all sorts of electronic devices. So the variety of specialization in design is, is vast. Design also influences uh, widely people's uh, lifestyle, habits, and, uh, and tastes. And the living environment, uh, internal space of our homes. Uh, design drives messages and is crucial for the understanding of them of important issues uh, such as the protection of the natural environment. It has a great influence on essential uh, life, life activities, uh, living, moving, communicating, eating, enjoying, etc. So design embraces several aspects of our life, and therefore it's responsible for the quality of the built environment. All the outputs in terms of pollution generated by everything is drawn and produced by us. So it seems that at our latitude, uh, it is a common belief that global warming, a phenomenon connected with the climate change and all related risks, uh, mostly endanger species living in cold climates. 
and that somehow they are far away from us. Actually, it is true that while planets temperatures rise up, north and south poles change. And a study published by Natural Geographic um, shows that by the middle of the century, uh, 2036, 36, ice packs will melt completely in the summer field and the Arctic Sea will be fully navigable. In September 2018, and 18 September is when the ice pack gets its minimum annual extension, it was minor 25% than the average uh, recorded uh, in the previous 40 years. So the melting rate has increased by six times. And as a, as a result, the study says that species who depend on ice, such as white bears, uh, rather than seals, etc., will have hard time when the ice, when the ice melts. And there are, of course, other consequences. For instance, sea level rise, threatening coastal settlement, modification of the marine ecosystems at different levels, etc. Ice uh, is a sink, which means that absorb CO2, carbon dioxide, from the atmosphere. And melting, uh, melting, uh, it, it, it releases back this carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, contributing to increase the temperatures. This is a photo uh, showing a wildfire in the Arctic region last summer caused by the increase of temperature. Um, as for iceberg, forests are also a sink. They capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, but burning the CO2 is released back to the, to the atmosphere. So, However, <clears throat> global warming uh, will have a great impact uh, even wider in southern climate regions. Uh, in, tropi in tropical areas, uh, the orange uh, zone along the equator lives the majority of the species on planet. So, <clears throat> um, if, we, uh, if we take an uh, imaginary journey, living from the, the North Pole on a beautiful day of spring, there will be a still a lot of ice uh, around us. Um, we start to walk, uh, or better, we start to ski. And if we reach the North Quebec, here, um, you are still north of the line of the tree, which is the edge of the habitat in which trees are capable of growing. But if we walk down around 400 kilometers, you will arrive at the taiga, Canadian taiga, or boreal forest. And although the Canadian taiga is huge, it represents a quarter of all remaining forests on Earth, its biodiversity is limited. Only Around, uh, around 20 species of native trees. And if we continue to walk down in Vermont, we will bump into the temperate deciduous forest that hosts around 50 species of trees. Massachusetts, 55, and North Carolina, 200, 200 species. If we, um, if we go uh, closer to the equator, in uh, Belize, which is a very tiny state in the Central America, it has around 700 species of native trees. And Eastern Peru, uh, in Eastern Peru, the biodiversity is astonishing because we have more than 1,000 uh, species of trees. And, uh, and the same, is, same situation is if we look for birds, butterflies, frogs, uh, mushrooms, any other organism. So as a general rule, biodiversity improves moving from the poles to lower latitudes with temperature rising. So therefore, um, uh, while temperatures increase, uh, no area on the planet will be safe. To understand this, uh, what's happening, we need to know a bit about mechanisms of the atmosphere. First, global warming. Global warming is generated from the excess of CO2, carbon dioxide, in the atmosphere. But 
Carbon dioxide is one of the primary greenhouse gases causing greenhouse effect. And what is the greenhouse effect? Is the process uh, in the planet's atmosphere by which radiation from the sun warms the planet's surface. So basically, greenhouse effect is critical to support life on Earth. Without atmosphere, temperature would drop dramatically. So then the intensity of downward radiation depends on the amount of greenhouse gases contained in the atmosphere. And CO2 carbon dioxide occurs naturally on Earth, on the atmosphere, as well as on these things that we have been talking before. So ice caps, glaciers, forests, oceans, and so on. The um, third the CO2 uh, concentration in an atmosphere in the pre-industrial time has been regulated by photosynthetic organisms and geological phenomena. For instance, uh, when we breathe, we, we emit uh, CO2. But this CO2 that goes to the atmosphere, then it exchange with the ocean. So the ocean keeps it. So the carbon uh, cycle describes the movement of carbon as it is recycled and reused through the biosphere. But humans have disturbed the biological carbon cycle for many centuries by modifying land use, cutting forests, and moreover, with the recent industrial scale mining of fossil carbon from the geosphere, coal, petroleum, and gas extraction, and the combustion of wood and fossil fuels to make power, heating, and transportation. Um, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere had increased nearly 50% over pre-industrial levels in 2020, forcing greater atmospheric transformation and Earth's surface temperature warming up. At current greenhouse emission rate, temperatures could increase by two degrees, which the United Nations designated as the upper limit to avoid dangerous levels by the 2036. Coral reefs, uh, according to scientists, are the first ecosystem of the modern age to disappear due to ocean acidification. Ocean acidification is generated from the increase of CO2 on the ocean water since it alters pH value of the water. Um, and as we said, ocean is a sink that absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, likewise forests, ice caps, glaciers, etc. If trends of CO2 emission in atmosphere will increase at the actual rate, in 50 years from now, corals will stop building and reefs will disappear. So reef deterioration is a significant, uh, significant sign of changes in progress, an alarm bell. Well, <clears throat> the ongoing uh, atmospheric transformation are unique in the history of our planet. Um, burning fossil fuels, uh, humans, uh, uh, are releasing in atmosphere carbon that remained isolated for millions of years uh, underground. Somehow they are bringing back the geological history of our planet at light speed. And specialists claim that today concentration of carbon dioxide is higher than 3 million years ago. So what is happening that we don't see? Uh, temperature raise on land is about twice the global average, leading to desert expansion, heat waves, and wildfires. Warmer temperatures are increasing rates of evaporation, causing more intense storms and weather extremes. Impacts on ecosystems include the relocation or extinction of many species as their environment change. But transformation threatens people as well, with food insecurity, water scarcity, flooding, sea level rise, with coastal cities and highlands disappearing, etc. 
many of these impacts are already felt at a current level of warming, which is about 1.2 degrees above pre-industrial levels. As time does never stop and the universe is eternal, words are born and die. The sea proceeds and recedes. What was one once sea might now be land. Everything changes with time. So Aristotle, the uh, Greek philosopher, refers to geological transformation. Um, what we live today is caused by humans. So, do you know about the five most uh, catastrophic events occurred in the history of our planet? So, the graph on the on, on the right uh, represents all the uh, geological uh, the geological time scale, while the one on the on the left is a curve that shows when it drops the five the big the big five, which are these uh, big events of mass extinction. One, two, three. Four and five, and uh, these events were uh, turning points for substantial changes or nerd. The question is if can humans now can provoke the 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 next the next mass extinctions. We learn about our planet history through reading rocks. This is a sample of uh, Edgola del Bottaccione in Gubbio in Italy, which is composed of three, uh, three levels. The first stratum of limestone from the Cretaceous, Cretaceous period shows a great uh, numbers of uh, foraminivers, which are the marine submarine organisms of uh, large dimensions. Above, we have a layer of clay uh, without any organisms, uh, which represented discontinuity of time <clears throat> in the geological time scale, uh, scale. And then we have another layer of limestone uh, showing a shorter list of species of smaller dimension. Um, so the fossils uh, show the progressive evolution of life on Earth. And this is an illustration on the, on the left that shows the fossil the fossils record. And let's say that we are on the top. Uh, the Anthropocene is the geological epoch dominated by the Homo sapiens, is our time. And Homo sapiens is the name that this species gave to itself. Because of anthropogenic emissions and geological transformation, such as <clears throat> Uh, the cut of uh, down of entire forest uh, and from one third to half of the planet's surface that have been transformed, the um, uh, depleting of the energy stock underground, uh, waterways were damaged or deviated, fishing depletes, use of more than half of the spring water accept accessible on the planet. Because of all of these issues that almost happens caused Climate will change significantly from its natural behavior. Many species migrate, while others, millions, are abandoned, and the rate of extinctions grow. Previously, no creatures are as altered life on Earth as much as humans. Rarely, our planet has faced such strong transformation able to cause the collapse of entire biodiversity of the biodiversity. And only recently, humans have understood they can provoke a new mass extinction, the sixth extinction. So humans left already a lasting record of their presence on Earth. And in hundred millions of years, hundred millions of years later, our monuments, museums, sculptures, etc., will be compacted on a sediment layer, no thicker than a cigarette paper. So the question is, uh, what do you want to live on this planet as a designer? We are into an environmental crisis fully. 
politics, economics, policy, and education are mutually involved. And we need governments to lead the transition to uh, a green, uh, better world. We reached the 2020, uh, the year of pandemic, with all of these uh, environmental issues. So do we think that the pandemic is an opportunity and a discontinuity with the past? And we will want to go back to our old life. And another question is, if we believe that COVID-19 was a turning point for a change, I think that we want to go back to our old life because we want to visit other country and we want to go to theater and cinema and we go and we want to go to restaurants and and bars. But what has to change, I believe, is the way uh, how we do these things because we don't want crowd, we don't want noise, we don't want inequity, and we don't want an unpleasant pollute, polluted environment. So we are going, there are signs, despite all, uh, signs of a change of direction. For instance, the pandemic encouraged uh, digitalization, the dematerialization of uh, several product, product and services. And slowly we are going toward the sustainable future. So this is uh, the official statement from the World Commission on Environmental and Development uh, that says that the sustainable development meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So in these circumstances, how designer can support the transition to a new society. I believe that uh, uh, always they do that, always designing according to needs, function, and aesthetic. Uh, the meaning of industrial product is constantly changing uh, because they are uh, beside the technicists. They are products are also the result of the evolution of the cultural system. And um, but this is not the only task of, task for designers because uh, designers' task goes beyond objects. Designers has to imagine and define new scenarios. And luckily, there are tools that uh, help designers to perform their job. Uh, here, for instance, um, we have an illustration uh, of a model of life cycle designer that was created by Carlo Vezzoli, who is a professor in environmental design at uh, Politecnico di Milano, that shows um, how to uh, integrate um, environmental criteria into the, 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 the creative process. Life cycle design uh, describes uh, activities and sub activities related to products uh, life uh, from the creation to disposal and the flow of materials and energy between the products and the environment. And it is also a modular approach to design that, as said, integrates environmental criteria. There are strategies of life cycle design that we, uh, we need to implement into the design process. Uh, some of them are <clears throat> reduce resources, materials, and energy, uh, prefer low environmental impact resources and manufacturing process, Optimize products life cycle and improve lifespan. Extend materials life 
by reusing them through recycling, composting, producing energy, etc. Implement disassembly and facilitate maintenance, etc. Those are some of the strategies that can be involved in the in the in the design uh, process. And here we have uh, just few uh, examples of products uh, showing those strategies. For instance, minimize the use of resources in packaging, optimize products life cycle. For example, designing uh, a, a bed that grows uh, uh, along the, uh, the, the, the life of the kit that is also growing. Or select the appropriate materials. If we, for instance, put these two uh, products on a timeline, uh, we will see that the tonnet, probably the, the tonnet that was uh, made in the 80s, 59, with more than 100 years uh, of history, is probably much more sustainable than a cardboard armchair built in 2020 that probably will have a few months of, of, uh, of life cycle. Strategies uh, generated uh, different solutions according to the field of implementation. For instance, uh, according to a recent study in the EU, carbon emission from uh, road transportation has a huge impact on the atmosphere. And here, for instance, sharing is an example of how to decrease emission by optimizing in the use of cars and their lifespan. So, a sharing is a good example of how to think in terms of strategies to decrease carbon footprint. Uh, a car is better used if it's uh, shared by more than one person. And of course, it's better if it's fueled, if it's powered by renewable uh, energy. So we need to rethink transportation, for instance, in our cities. Um, it means, for example, uh, to develop uh, new vehicles for the city center, especially in historical context. We could have tiny electric means of transportation for the taxi service, mail and parcel delivery, food, ambulance, etc. We could take inspiration from classic uh, Piaggio trucks and then adapt to with uh, electric uh, propulsion. Um, we could implement a sharing, as I said, of cars, bikes, and scooters. We could uh, also improve uh, sea routes where possible to manage traffic. And why not aerial uh, routes using drones, for instance? And support uh, electric private vehicles, such as Tesla is doing. We need to slow down speed to minimize the use of resources uh, and turn our interest toward uh, renewable energy, such as wind, solar, wave, hydrogen, and, and all of this. And then we have already sustainable means of transportation, especially at sea, uh, that we need to learn. This is an example of uh, a concept. There are thousands of uh, concepts like this uh, in the aviation of solar plane and, and prototypes. In the um, uh, luxury area, <clears throat> in the yacht design, for instance, uh, what is happening is that um, last year, Bill Gates commissioned to Synod Yacht Design, which is a famous Dutch film, a uh, hundred meters uh, yacht uh, powered by hydrogen in order to reduce the impact uh, in operation. Does it keep the uh, video? Okay. So we go toward uh, alternative ideas of luxury uh, based on uh, unicity of the location. Um, 
minimalist constructions uh, that adapt to the surrounding environment. And uh, even if we, uh, if we refer to movable resorts, such as ships, cruise ships, what makes a different experience is living in harmony with nature, following its cycles, learning about it, enjoying it, exploring. So strategies of low, lowering uh, landscape and visual impacts, lighting and sound impacts, do not disturb the environment. In this photo, <clears throat> uh, the, the ruined medieval tower uh, is part of the surrounding landscape. It seems generated by the same uh, geological process and made of the same substance. Uh, there is a continuity of, uh, of shapes, types of stones and shades of colors that makes the tower well integrated with the place, camouflage. And I believe this is a strong inspiration for the design of contemporary low landscape impact constructions. I also prepared some videos. I don't know if I'm able to show. We'll see. Uh, going ahead uh, in uh, coastal areas, uh, <clears throat> water offers opportunities to develop our cities. In Netherlands, someone call it uh, Blue Revolution, a strategic to combat raised sea level, but also helping shortage of housing due to lack of available construction sites. Fundamentals of floating architectures are adaptation to the natural environment, preservation of landscape from destructive action, mitigation of the overall impact of human activities, activities on Earth. And absence of permanent foundations is a peculiar feature of buoyant structures, allowing flexibility to adapt to various external factors. Uh, in this regard, uh, the diagram from the book Floating Squares shows a configuration of platform uh, providing attractions and activities as a, an, extern an extension of the city along the coast uh, and its metamorphosis during different uh, during different seasons. And here <clears throat> I'm showing you a couple of examples of uh, designs that we have uh, de uh, been developing with with some of my students of the second year. Uh, about about water water uh, water construction. Uh, this is, for instance, a cultural center in uh, Kairin, in the Kairinia Arbor, and is a is a cultural center uh, which is shaped with an organic uh, with organic forms in order to uh, to adapt uh, to adapt to to the to the landscape. It has um, also a, a, a green um, a roof garden, which is on the same level of the of the um, of the cliff. Um, that helps the building to somehow camouflage with the cliff uh, behind. And then there is a long bridge that never touched the water of the land, and it connects directly with with a castle here. And the internal uh, uh, space is uh, designed according to the organic shape and according to a vertical cylinders that support all the vertical connections, such as stairs and lift, and a lift uh, to connect all the uh, the floors and the and the and the roof garden. And the same principle we um, have we developed on uh, other solutions, such as a pavilion. A three uh, three stories pavilion with with one uh, exhibition space under the level of the water, 
And this one, again, uh, following the same pr principle, is developed on a organic shapes. A does uh, a double skin and a, and a, a garden uh, on a roof to mitigate the temperature inside. And we know how warm is Cyprus in, uh, in the summertime. So these concepts are, uh, as I said, are uh, inspired by organic forms and the surrounding elements of the landscape, the sea and the rocky cliff. Uh, it's interesting because in nature, uh, we can observe a wide range of forms, thousands of thousands, and also patterns of skins that we can borrow and eventually implement in uh, external elevations. But more interesting, I think, would be to understand the mechanisms of organisms and, the, and nature more deeply than what we have done until today. So imagine whether our constructions arise from the sea and they behave as a live organism in balance of energy and waste in and out with the environment and, uh, and low zero uh, carbon emission. Other characteristics we can borrow are chameleonic. Our buildings or our floating objects can be transparent or bioluminescent. They can be silent and efficient in the motion. They can be multifunctional. For example, they can have systems for capturing CO2 from the atmosphere to clean the water or to generate clean energy. And of course, being self-sufficient. We should question ourselves whether floating objects or buildings can smartly interact with the surrounding environment in a symbiotic relationship. For instance, the corals, uh, uh, which transform the environmental through massive construction projects, um, but they operate and they operate in a similar way as humans do, but with the main difference that reefs support other species rather than relocate them. Millions of species depends on the coral reef to get protection and food. So corals are complex ecosystems. And on this topic, there are researchers and institutes uh, around the world uh, that are investigating new ecological materials, for instance, and how to combine them with digital fabrication techniques to produce uh, architectural structures without depleting natural resources. And this is, for instance, a uh, silk pavilion uh, designed by the one of the, the uh, uh, MIT uh, Mediated Matter Group, um, where the um, team uh, designed a, a, a modular uh, dome, um, a modular dome, and then they um, placed it inside thousands of alive silk. Uh, that have been depositing silk fiber to complete to complete uh, the dome. It's a very interesting uh, concept, of course, um, experiment, and you can find detailed videos showing uh, the way they 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 plant and built uh, on uh, oxman.com, which is the website of the director of the, of the MIT uh, Media Lab. So the implementation of alternative materials uh, give the opportunity of creating revolutionary products. Here, a man-made fabric skin, uh, said Chris Bengal, who is the former uh, head of design of BMW, applied to a car, Gina, allowed his team to challenge existing principles and conventional processes. So the body of the car changes its shape according to exterior conditions and speed. Uh, the fabric is stretched over an aluminum frame with moving parts. The shape is controlled by many ele electric uh, um, hydraulic actuators 
at points where flexibility flexibility is needed, like doors that are to open or spoiler or or uh, light. I don't know. Uh, you are not able to see the videos, unfortunately. So let's go ahead. And <clears throat> productions uh, and, um, uh, and technologies and um, construction technologies are also important to take into account. For instance, today we have 3D printing that gives, uh, from on one on, on on one side, that gives a freedom of designing and building any any sort of shape. Uh, but more most important, they allow the to control the production process, uh, reducing the surplus of energy and materials otherwise wasted. And nowadays. Um, uh, there are uh, 3D printers that allow to to design house as well as uh, glass uh, products or piece of arts, but also boats. This is a this is a, a composite material boat that has been printed, um, and it's a eight meter uh, long uh, motor boat. I have a video. I don't know if I can show you later. So before going to conclusion, uh, I want to also mention my area of work as a designer that concern ship engineering and design. Um, the company I work with, uh, Kenudi Ansen, a Danish firm uh, uh, based in Helsingor in Denmark, is, a, is also approaching the environmental issues, uh, supporting the transition to renewable energy, in particular wind, and hydrogen. For instance, we are highly skilled in the design of wind turbine installation vessel uh, to support uh, the development of offshore wind farms, which is a growing industry, especially in northern countries. The second I'm showing is a, a gas career, is a project for a sustainable uh, fuel transport and munkering. Because in order to operate a natural gas or hydrogen vessel, we need all the necessary infrastructures, uh, such as support vessel, etc. And in Denmark, we are working in this direction and developing the first hydrogen ferry that will transport people and cars and trucks between Copenhagen and Oslo, and it will be fully electric and is expected in five years' time. So we uh, power a uh, big, uh, huge cargo vessel with uh, natural uh, gas. And this lower the emission of, uh, of, um, of around 60%. Uh, cargo vessel are, mm, Roro vessel are, uh, are ships that uh, are able to transport uh, wheeled cargo, such as cars or trucks and other vehicles. <clears throat> And then another project we are, that I want to show is uh, the Adventure Wind Cruise Vessel. We are investing on wind. This kind of ship uh, appeals to passengers who prefer a more intimate cruise experience while visiting destinations that are inaccessible by larger ships, minimizing their carbon footprints. So we are talking about eco, eco tourism. Ah, here, maybe I uh, I don't know if you can see the video.
So Hello, Carmelo, a short comment. Uh, there is a instruction in the private chat about how you can share a video. Ah, uh, yes, uh, yes, because I had some video that I wanted to show and I wasn't able. Yeah, they were connected. Um, uh, can you see this uh, private chat text for, uh, from our uh, moderator, Chardash? I mean, we have time, so I'm, uh, maybe you can try to run them. Yes, yes. So, um, okay. Hey, for me, it's again time to withdraw myself. I'm not sure I if I can. Carmelo, uh, you can yes. hear me, right? Yes. OK, I please just drag, drag the video. Uh, no worries, just drag the video. Just click on it and drag it, put it into your browser. You are using Chrome, I assume, right? Yes. So I open okay, no, just... so... Did you open it My... on browser, on the browser? I'm trying. Okay, just as I told you, like drag it and put it on the, the on the plus thing right side of the browser of your tab as a new tab. When you drag and put it on the browser, uh, a new page will appear. Oops, okay, he's gone now. Marco, you would like to join me so we can have a chat? I mean, as uh, as he's off. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. back. <laughs> oh, I'm back. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't understand. Unfortunately, I never understand this technical thing. With <laughs> it. Okay, I mean, maybe next time then. I, I don't know, Marco, what do you suggest? It's up to Carmelo. Because it's, if it's... I, if I, um, so if I launch the video, you don't see it, right? Nope. I mean, we can see it, but we will not be hearing the sound if you have any sound inside. No, because you have to uh, push a share audio button uh, after inserting it into the yeah, uh, Chrome tab. Do you see any video now? No. You have to share it first. Again, use the share button at in, in the StreamYard so we can ah. see what you're sharing. All right. Maybe I understood finally. Uh, if not, also, uh, I mean, probably I also would have problems to understand it, to how to do it. <laughs> so, yes, like this. here it is. I can oh, hear it now. Wow. All right. Shall I, shall I press on play? <laughs> uh, mm, OK. Yes. Okay, this one was a... Um...
Yes, this is a this is a video that was related to the the, the, the cars that I showed you before, and so showing the the, the, the possibility, the opportunity that uh, the new materials can can offer. This one was the print took 70 hours to print, used about 5,000 pounds of carbon ABS. And we learned that it went pretty well. There's some things we do a bit differently. Um... So this one was a time lapse of uh, how to build that ship that I showed you before with a 3D printing machine. And this one, and this one is a video uh, about a luxury yacht that was designed, uh, commissioned by Bill Gates to to the Dutch uh, yacht design studio, Synod Yacht Design. Is the hydrogen hydrogen uh, vessel? It's a concept. Yes, um, and then there was a fourth. Um, okay. And then there was a fourth, is a very short uh, video that shows the the wind uh, cruise vessel that my company has designed is a fly is a flight around so it's powered mainly by wind so wind is the main uh, main uh, pro propulsion system And also, I don't know if I'm able to. Okay. There was something else, but I think we can. I have something text to I have something 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 else to show. Let's see if I can or not. Okay, let's go to to back to the presentation. So um, Cyprus. Uh, <clears throat> So let's have a look of how we can implement all these ideas that I have been talking until now uh, in our place. Uh, in order to improve the quality of the environment where we live. So I suggest to the students who are listening that, that when they go around, they take notes, whether they find any of these ideas or other ideas that they think they can implement to make the place more sustainable. 
we could have we can we could design sustainable resorts in uh, carpets or we could have uh, floating uh, buildings, pavilion and students' housing in Famagusta or Girne. We could improve electric uh, transportation in the historical Carmelo? center of... Yes. Sorry, can you please share your presentation? Because while you're uh, trying to share your videos, I have lost it and I cannot see it at the moment. So please share it again. Thank you. Okay. All right. I can see it now. Thank you. Okay. So, so what I was saying is that uh, yes. So um, I don't know if you were hearing too. Um, but we have uh, we we could uh, improve, uh, uh, for instance, um, uh, electric transportation or. Uh, urban uh, new uh, urban vehicles in the historical center of Nicosia, uh, Girne, rather than Famagusta. And we could also think at uh, a, a new system of uh, water taxi connecting um, more than one terminals on the coastline of Girne, or eventually a solar ferry to connect uh, Girne to, to Mersin. So there are many ideas that we could develop also in our design studio. So to end this presentation, uh, three main points. Uh, so first, uh, my suggestion to students, get inspired from nature mechanisms when approaching, when approaching a new project. Because a nature offers a wide range of forms and solution to uh, be understood deeply. Uh, two, introduce life cycle design tool and strategies into the creative process to improve sustainability of your designs. And three, most important, be aware of environmental issues. Raise awareness on environmental issues is crucial in order to change direction. Uh, we need alternative ways to live, more respectful and tolerant to our planet. So in this context, uh, designers have a primary role of creating sustainable uh, scenarios. So be ready for the next wave. Thank you very much. Those are uh, some readings and uh, and uh, watching watch watch uh, um, movies that you can find on Netflix uh, and other support. Yeah, Carmelo, thank you very much for this very very interesting uh, talk. I have at least one uh, question about a detail, but uh, maybe I, we should give sure. uh, the stage to guests who listen and to who watch this video or your talk, if there's anybody out there, because actually from my point of view, I cannot see how many people are with us and listening, watching. 12. Oh, that's very good. So uh, good number. And by the way, behind these 12, there might be even many more because um, several people are uh, in the class. So they might watch um, as one connection together. Yes, please um, raise your questions, your concerns, your criticisms. Probably the presentation was very crowded of uh of information but i think uh, i was thinking i could have been talking about any project that i that i do at work but for for some reason i had the opportunity to talk uh, today and i thought that for students now 
it's very extremely important to 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 talk about the issues related to the to the environment because mm. that's the next step of uh, i believe as a designers and also as an academician that that's this is the next step of uh, of uh, development that we have to do uh, and so it's important to to uh, keep in mind and to start to bring into the process these strategies that can help us to to improve the environmental qualities of our products mm. so i know that maybe it's, yeah yes please uh, to to the listeners uh, you have a possibility to comment uh, from youtube um, if you sign in into your account uh, it's possible to comment and we will see this here but okay for the time being i have a question uh, you have introduced several methods to yeah let's say to avoid consumption of fossil resources um, and well one of them is also the uh, the battery system for automobiles um, and i wanted to to ask you um, specifically if you believe that this is actually overall um, better than using fossil resources. I mean, considering the uh, energy that is necessary to produce these batteries and later on the energy uh, that is necessary possibly to dispose of them. Um, I mean, I read a few articles about that the question how to recycle these batteries or dispose of them is very unclear. Um, going into the direction that possibly again the third world is a destination of um, where these batteries once will go after they they cannot be used anymore do, I mean, yeah, do you have any right. knowledge um, any, any idea about this but i'm not a designer of batteries but what i can what i can say is that for sure the batteries uh, area of design is is um uh, needs to be discovered more uh, there is innovation uh, to do in this in this area but um, uh, we need to see uh, the opposite outcomes of introducing electric vehicles in our uh, in our cities not only in terms of disposal of battery but in terms of uh, decrease of noise decrease of traffic uh, decrease of pollution in the air um decrease of uh, uh, um, uh, emissions and pollution uh, from the production processes of of cars uh, of the industry of cars so there are many aspects that we have to take into account and that's why we need to think uh, using that model that i showed about life cycle design because that the modular that maybe there will be other uh, there will be other occasion where i can go deeply on some of these uh, arguments subjects that i showed today because the life cycle uh, design tool is a modular way of designing products that takes into account all of this all of the aspects related to the product so and you need to uh, you try to uh, decrease the uh, the impact as much as possible but of course there would be still uh, aspect that needs further research and investigation such as batteries for instance mm -hmm. but i fully believe on electric systems uh, transportation and i uh, hope that after this uh, this period of pandemic we will go back to the that's what i was saying in my presentation we will go back to our own life so we will still moving like we were doing before but we will do it in a different way uh, using different uh, way of uh, transport means of transportation hmm. that's what i believe and what i uh, i hope and that's what we are doing uh, in my office in copenhagen we are of course we have to uh, keep up with the market but also we are trying to invest energy on um, uh, and resources on uh, rene renewable energy um, uh, development 
on so ships. How's the, response, of how's the response of your clients uh, to these issues? I mean, uh, I can imagine that uh, at the moment, possibly these more environmental uh, designs are more expensive, uh, possibly. So um, how do the clients react to this? Are they willing to to invest but more? Mm. Um, mm. Uh, the thing is that there are, on one side, there are standards that are changing, standards of design. Uh, so the companies that can afford, and they have to, and they are designing new ships, and they are going to build new ships, they um, uh, they ask, they ask for it. Also because uh, because they have the, they have a return in terms of. Uh, uh, in, term, in terms of, uh, of cost as well. Mm -hmm. um, and ships, uh, as in general, means of transportation, uh, looking again at the life cycle design, uh, impact more in the operation. So the life cycle of any uh, product, as I said, is divided in five main stages. So pre-production, production, operation, and then we have the uh, disposal. So ships, mm. as any other means of transportation, pollute more in operation. So it's there that if we want to have a green uh, transportation system, we have to work. Mm. Uh, and I have to say that especially uh, northern, northern uh, companies, they are very keen to invest in developing these uh, new solutions. So we have different clients. Uh, they, they are building cargo vessel uh, powered with natural uh, gas. And then we have this uh, uh, new design, this ferry for uh, DFDS is a Danish company that will operate between Copenhagen and Oslo. It will be fully electric. Um, and and they, and they are design and we are designing the version and there is a, a, a team of other specialists that are designing all the infrastructures and and everything is is necessary for uh, operating this kind of uh, ships so you would say that you also create the demand by offering uh, designers Yes, designers you, has to create you the offer, demand. Yeah, you offer the environmental, environmentally, let's say, safe product, and it is accepted. It's not necessarily that clients ask for it. I mean, I'm trying to understand the, the process, uh, the possible process there. Yes, designers create the, the, the demand. But there are also uh, uh, indications by the governments, no, and, uh, and standards that uh, slowly are coming out about the emissions, mm -hmm. no, that mm -hmm. we need to design according to this. Uh, and then there are there are investors and companies who are keen to 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 uh, to invest on this kind of projects. Mm. So it's a system of 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 things. It's it's a yeah back and forth. And, yeah, uh, back and yeah. forth. Then I'm a oh, then I'm a designer. So I'm mm. in the office and I uh, so I'm not in too much into the uh, you know the um, the talk behind. Uh, but uh, but that's how the 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 things are are going <clears throat> mm. are moving. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't see any uh, question now from the classrooms, for example, from Facebook as well. There could be actually uh, questions. So, last chance for the last audience call. to to comment. And yeah. Okay, I want to thank you very much, Carmelo, for for this talk. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, it's also, of course, somehow my my own, uh, yeah, let's say, 
uh, concern environmental issues and so i was very interested in how um, you as a designer as an industrial designer deal with these uh, problems what kind of answers you offer and yes i i hope at another occasion um, we will listen to you again we will watch you again uh, possibly with some examples of of your own designs uh, that would be interesting to follow up and yes and i also thank to the audience for attendance 12 people this is this is very good actually i've uh, mm. checked the other um i mean let's say 12 connections how many people behind uh, um, it can be more so that is a good number uh, i can say yes Yes, we can uh, we can do it again and other times if you if you like and I can show again to to other students or other classes if you that you that you that are interested to 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 listen at this. Uh, mm. Yes, uh, there are I mean, a lot of. Yeah, hopefully we will bring you in in uh, in person uh, one day again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope I hope very soon. I hope very are... soon. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And as I said, there are. Uh, in this presentation, there are several uh, topics and subjects that can be um, uh, um, uh, that I can talk uh, separately. So mm -hmm. we can talk only about sheets, or we can go talk only about electric transportation, mm -hmm. and uh, or uh, the theory of life cycle design. So there are several topics that we can go through on next. Um, uh, uh, seminars hmm. so cool. thank you very much for me it was fun to was fun to participate yeah yeah it was also fun to try out all uh, this technical stuff <laughs> okay yes Hamelo, thank you right. Charles, thank you very thank much you for the technical oh. support and yes bye bye to everybody bye bye Do you remember how you discovered the world around you? Can you hear the beat of life? Can you hear it by seeing it and feeling with all your senses? Hey, can you still hear it? There's something in you, driving you, calling you. Calling you in closer and closer. It's happening right now. Time to free your curiosity that's always in you. Now, it's time to act. This is an act of discovery. It requires looking to the world in new ways. not offering you the answers. We are here to encourage your questions, but more important than the question is how you answer it. Try the ordinary, then try the unusual. To live is learn, and to learn is to live.
live, learn. It's an endless process. This is your path. This is your journey. You decide how it's going to be. Just enjoy every moment of it. We believe in design, keeping it simple but also significant. We believe in art for looking at the world with a unique perspective. We believe in creativity for communicating better with the world. Creativity takes courage. The future belongs to the curious. Come and experience it with us in Arakad and discover your creative potential.